Paul J. Medford. Thank you for joining us in conversation at Complex Magazine. You're welcome. Here in your dressing room at the Theatre Royal Drew Lane, where you are currently starring in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What's it like being home? Well, you know, I've missed it. You know, doing a West End show is the hardest thing in the world. It's harder than being a pop star on tour. It's harder than being a screen actor or a stage actor or a comedian because every single night you have to perform this show and you have to sing and you have to dance. There's no swapping out the set. There's no making something slow. It's, it's there and you have to do it and it's hard. And I don't know why we do it. It's a bit like a drug, but you get addicted to it. And when you haven't done it for a while, you think, oh, I think I just need to do that again. And so when they called, I was like, yeah, that seems like a good idea. I'll do it. So let's go back to that. You mm -hmm. got a call. When was the last time that you were here on stage in London? I haven't done a show since 2010. I was in Sweet Charity at the Theatre Royal Haymarket, and I did that for 18 months, and at the end of that I was like, oh, no more shows, that's it. I'm never doing shows again. It's too hard on the body. I'm too old. Um, no. Dancing, bossy, it's just too much. It's hard, it's hard. People don't understand. You have to, I have to lie down all day. I have to lie down. I know, I know. But still, you know, the shoulders and the hip. And the, but you still have to lie down. I'm closer to 50 than I am 40, so I have to lie down most of the day in order to be able to do it at night. So I somehow forgot about that and when they called about this, my agent who in London, um, Stephen at Gavin Barker is amazing and he calls me every week to say this has come in, do you want to do it? And I normally say, you crazy, it's so cold in London, I live in LA now, it's hot, no. Um, and at the same time that he called about this, a musical director called Nigel Lilly that I had worked with, I think, suggested me. And the casting director, Pippa Ailey, and I had worked with on many shows from The Lion King to Five Guys, so pretty much all my West End career, she had uh, facilitated it as the casting director. They all called and I was like, oh, this is a sign. I should do this. And then they sent me some music that uh, Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, who did Smash and Hairspray, had done. And uh, I heard it and I thought, oh, this is great. This is so good. I have to. And uh, then they said Sam Mendes was directing. And I hadn't seen Skyfall yet, but people were talking about it. And I thought, well, this is all, this is all good stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just so happened to be coming back from my cousin's wedding. And the, the, audi <laughs> the, auditions, the, the auditions landed like two days after the wedding. Right. So I got you know, a little drunk at the wedding and I went in and did this audition. I thought, oh, I'm not either. This is not going to work for me. I wasn't great, um, but did it. And then they said, oh, can you stay for a little while uh, to do another audition and meet the Warner Brothers people? So then by then I had time to get it together, you know, and, okay, and really I'm get this together. Okay, I'm going way too far. Too far? Really, what too I far. need to know, let me okay. take you right back okay, go on. to the audition. Yes. Let me picture this. Okay. So we've got Paul J. Medford, right. West End Bay from yeah. the Cradle. We're going to yeah. get to that in a moment mm -hmm. about how you've you know, done this from your infancy. Right. So this is a huge audition. You yeah. know, Mr. Sam Mendes, yeah. Warner Brothers people. Yeah. You can't just throw that in and not tell me exactly what it was like walking into that audition. And well, just how many goes there were at it. Well, it's, you know, I have to say, I don't get nervous anymore, you know, and because I've done that kind of audition before with the whole, the world there. Mm -hmm. Like the Lion King audition had like 50 people at it. And I'm at that point now where I feel like if it's for me, it's for me. If it's not, it's not, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes I'm good on the day and some days I'm not good on the day. Um, so it's not that chorus line where you're going, I hope I get it. Not anymore. No. Not anymore. Okay. It's like, oh, if I get this, this will be cute. If I don't, okay. you know what? It's okay. okay. It's not nothing in show business for me is the end of the world anymore. Right. And that has a lot to do with having done it since I was four. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a good audition. Uh, you know, Sam was so great. He was very gentle. And actually, I wasn't in the best form that I've ever been with the vocals. Because some days you just can't sing. It, like you want to sing. And it's alright for people that don't know your voice, but okay. the day that I did it, I was like, mm, this is alright, but it's not like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it, it, was, it was good enough. But then, then I thought, well, you know, the singing wasn't fierce enough for me, but let me just kill it with the acting. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I just throwed everything. Yeah. I just gave it all the acting. And I think that is kind of what sealed it. So, because when we got to rehearsals, Mark and Scott, who wrote the music, when you know we did a little workshop, and I started to sing, they were like, "Oh wow, let me write you some more." So they went away and wrote me a, a brand new uh, intro to the song. So I think that's what kind of happened. Okay, so fantastic. So yeah. you got it. You did this audition. You yeah. threw everything at it. You got yeah. the call saying, "You know, come to London." What I want to know about is. Yeah. Um, you have originated a number of roles yeah. here in London in, in the West End. Things yeah. like being Banzai in The Lion King, 
in Five Guys No Mo, yeah. who've originated a lot of those roles. I'm wondering, um, and this is the same you're originating role, well, I'm wondering how much of an input do you get in a production such as this, which I imagine is a bit of a juggernaut, actually? Um, in terms of input, you get enough. You know, there are a lot of cooks, there are a lot of different departments and everybody's wanting to make sure that their department is 100% superb. So you're a bit like a kid with many parents and you're trying to please everybody. Uh, but, you know, you bring what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And this was quite a lovely creative team. Peter Darling, the choreographer I had worked with before, I, hadn't wor I worked with him back in the 80s and I think what was his first choreographic job, oh what a lovely war. So I knew him and we hadn't worked together so I was, you know, excited to work with him again. Of course, I was huge fans of the music. As soon as I heard the music, I was like, oh, these American divas have got this. So like every, every time I heard the music, I was excited. And of course, Sam, then of course, after having get, getting the, the, the news that I got the job, I thought I ran out to see Skyfall. Um, and of course, I was so impressed with that. I was like, oh, damn. I'm in the company of divas here. I'm in the company of the, the best, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just come in every day and bring what you can to the table. Sam is the wonderful director who asks you to try things in many different ways, and I like that because I have a, when it comes to acting, I have a dancer mentality, right. which is just to, to uh, please. So therefore, if you, you want it like this, let me try it like this. Or you don't like it like that, how do you want it like this, let me try it like this. So I will try things a million ways because that's what a dancer does. Whereas an actor sometimes who doesn't think like that gets stuck in one mode or has decided he'd like to play it like this because he feels the character is this. I don't feel anything about the character until I see what the the blocking is and the staging is, and then I do that stuff after. Right. I find my way into it after the big picture has been created. Okay, let's talk about the character. You're yeah. playing Mr. Beauregard, mm -hmm. uh, Violet's daddy. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic character, I've seen you do this, very well done. I have to say, I was a little bit scared because um, it reminded me a touch of um, Chris Jenner meets uh, Matthew Knowles, so it was a stage parent yeah. to the nth and degree. It, they are terrifying. The kids in the show are great, aren't they? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. There's something terrifying about that kind of stage parent that's like, come on honey. Yeah, well it was by design, that's exactly what they wrote. And you know, I had a, some weight on my shoulders in the with, due to the fact that I am not what was in any of the films, or certainly not what was in the book. He doesn't look like me and Violet doesn't look like my daughter. So they made a brave decision to change it, you know, which I applaud and commend them for to the end. Um, but we talked about him being that horrible, horrible, pushy father that will sell his kids to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not scared of it, because that person exists. Um, we know him, so I play him. I don't make any apologies for him, I just go for it. No, you know, I don't want to be liked, I don't need to be liked. I'm up there having a great time, love me if you want, but know that I'm out for the money here and out for the sale. Yeah, and I will do whatever I have to do to, to make that happen. But yeah, well we got that because it, we absolutely got, we recognise ca those characters both in the children right. and in the parents because we have, there's a plethora of shows like this now about pageants and cheerleaders yes, and, and, and stuff like that. Yes, yes. And the, the parents are as much the show as, as the kids yeah. are. I have to say, um, I've seen this, the kids in it are great. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the violets who... Yeah. You know, the wonderful they, thing about this show is on the days when I don't feel like, oh, I could do this today. Um, I get into the theatre and the kids have so much energy, they carry you through. And I never know which daughter I'm going to get from one night to the next. And they all do it slightly differently. So one has to be on one's toes in order to work, react with them. Um, and that's what's great about this show. That's why, you, a bit like The Lion King, you never get tired of the show because the kids are constantly alternating and they come with an energy that is like nothing else. Paul, I hate to even ask you this because it feels like you have literally just started here in right. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm -hmm. but um, what's next for you? Are there any roles, musical theatre roles or theatre roles that you think, oh, I'd like to, you know, have a crack at that now? No. Straight up, no. Because every time I do a show, I think this is the last one. I can't do another one of these. <laughs> so I feel like, oh, it's absolutely the last one. So, yeah, and I have to do this for another 
year. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens after that, who knows? Mm -hmm. What happens alongside that is I have to keep my company, Myriad Model Casting, running in America at the same time. So I have certain weeks out from this where I'm going to fly back for like New York Fashion Week to cast for that and you know in, in February the same thing and everything else I'm doing via Skype to keep it rolling and my partner's doing the rest. Um, so I, that's what I'm doing, you know. But the good thing about this job is I have time to write, I have time to develop, I have time to do all those things that you can't normally do if you're having to, you know, act from 6 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. So that's the plan. We'll see how well I do. Any plans to bring any of your model casting type shows here in the UK? and Do any, any work here? Um, yeah, I'm working on it, you know. Once I get settled in with this show a little bit more and I have more time, I'm seeing who wants to do what. You know, I'm letting them know that I'm in the UK so I can, you know, spearhead the American things here for them and we'll see what, what you know. So Paul Jane Medford, thank you so much for joining us here in Conversation with Complex Magazine. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having us here. You're welcome. Thank you so much.